Hi everyone. In the immunology subject, we are going to discuss a topic called secondary lymphoidal organs. As we know, the lymphoidal organs are going to be of uh, two types functionally. They are primary lymphoidal organs and secondary lymphoidal organs. And we have gone through the primary lymphoidal organs in another part. And in this part, we are going to discuss about secondary lymphoidal organs. The secondary lymphoidal organs include lymph nodes, spleen, malt, gall, and salt. So what is this malt, gall, salt? So it's not a salt that we use in cooking. Okay. So malt means mucosal associated lymphoidal tissue. In the same manner, the gut, gut means the gut associated lymphoidal tissue. Then in the same manner, salt means skin associated lymphoidal tissue. So that's how we are going to have the lymphoidal tissues. Okay. That we will discuss in detail one by one now. So, first of all, we'll go through the lymph nodes and then spleen and then these lymphoidal tissues. These secondary lymphoidal organs are going to act as the filtering systems which removes the foreign antigens from the bloodstream as well as from the lymph which are going to evoke our immune response again as those foreign particles or foreign antigens. And the secondary lymphoid organs are usually very small and poorly developed at birth and grows with the age and up to a maximum size only. For example, uh, when we come to the primary lymphoid organs where the thymus is a well developed organ uh, at birth, but here they are going to develop and grow only after the birth. Okay, so that is how it is going to be inverse in growth regarding the primary lymphoid organ. Okay, let's come to the secondary lymphoid organ. So here you can see the tissue lymphatics and adenoids, tonsil, and you are going to have the lymph nodes and even the spleen. Okay, so we are mainly studying about the spleen, then lymph nodes. So here you can see these are going to be of the lymph nodes and the lymphatic tissues and our small intestine contains the base patches tissue that we will discuss and tonsils and adenoids. So these are all going to be considered as secondary lymphoidal organs where the bone marrow and thymus are primary lymphoidal organs. Okay, let's see the first type of uh, secondary lymphoidal organ that is lymph node. Okay, so here is a picture of a lymph node. So lymph nodes are complex, cellular, spherical or even ovoid structures present along the all along the lymphatic ducts okay so here you can see here so this is a in lymphatic uh, vessels or tissues so those are going to connect it and at a junction these are going to form as a uh, complex structure which we call the mass lymphoid node or lymphatic tissue so the lymph nodes are going to have the complex cellular or spherical or ovoid structures present along the lymphatic ducts and even uh, this human lymph nodes or encapsulated bean shaped structure. So here you can see the structure of a lymph node where it is going to be of a, some sort of resembling the bean shape. So, and moreover I told you a term called as encapsulated. Like the thymus organ as it contains the capsule, this lymph node is also capsulated. That's how we call it as encapsulated structure. Here you can see some sort of orange mixed color outerly which is going to be called as capsule. Okay and lymph nodes are the first organized lymph node structure to encounter antigens that enter the tissue spaces. One side of the lymph node if you are going to see here there is a dentation called as hilus. So through this hilus only our whatever the blood vessels enter the lymph node and leaves the lymph node and a efferent lymphatic vessel also present at this position only efferent eject uh, exit whatever it may be if you come to the efferent that enters into it so we are having the several uh, efferent lymphatic ducts or vessels whereas only one efferent that is a single efferent lymphatic duct 
leaves the lymph node. So remember, there are several efferent ducts which carries the lymph inside and only a single efferent lymphatic duct is there at the highest position which leaves the lymph node. Okay, And this lymph node is going to filter the lymph. So that's why it is important in the lymphatic circulation. And these are going to be present near the joints and the regions where arms and legs join the body. That is axilla and gronia. So here you can see, here you can see. Okay. So these are the regions where they are going to be present more in number. And this is a structure of a lymph node, the detailed structure of a lymph node. So where you can see a capsule and so many efferent ducts and a single efferent duct. And here is a hilus region, that is a dentation region, where so many blood vessels are carrying in and coming out of it. Okay, let's see the in detail, that is a histology of this lymph node. Then you will uh, get the total idea of this one. Okay, so as I told you, there are uh, numerous near the joints of uh, our arms, legs and uh, joining the body where axel and groin are there. There is a large group of uh, lymph nodes occurring in the mesentery which functions as a monitoring in finding out the antigens formed by the microbial flora of the gut. Even we can find that where they are monitoring whether they are working properly or not also they are doing this process. So coming to the histology that is the internal structure. The section of a lymph node shows that there is an outer collagenous capsule. So you can see the capsule and this capsule from which arise the radial septae. So here you can see the capsule is going to produce inside and those are being called as trabeculae. So these are going to be of a trabeculae. So morphologically the lymph node is divided into three regions. How many regions? three regions the outer cortex region and a middle part is going to be the paracortex region and completely inner part is going to be called as medulla in the thymus we had only two cortex and medulla but in the lymph node we are going to see them in three regions so outer is going to be the cortex region and the middle is going to be the paracortex region and inner is going to be called as medulla so let's see what is the cortex uh, having and what the things that are present in the paracortex region and then in the medulla region. So in the cortex, coming to the cortex, it is the outermost region of the lymph node. Obviously, uh, you are going to see it, the outermost region of it. And this cortex region is going to have more number of B lymphocytes or B cells. And along with the B cells, it also possesses some macrophages, follicular dendritic cells arranged as in the form of primary follicles. Okay. And after, uh, for example, when an antigen comes through this lymph that, uh, and enters exposure to this cortex region, the primary uh, follicles enlarges into secondary follicles. And those secondary follicles contain a germinal center from which our antibodies are going to be synthesized. That means they are going to be activated. And here I didn't mention any T cells, isn't it? So that's how the cortex region is going to be mentioned as thymus independent area. That means no T cells will be present in the cortex region. Then coming to the next part that is a paracortex region, this red zone, paracortex region. Beneath the cortex region, we are having the paracortex region and it has a great number of T cells. That is, uh, it has more uh, number of T cells or T lymphocytes and also possess some dendritic cells which are called as interdigitating dendritic cells which help to migrate from tissues to the nodes. And this is also having large quantities of MHC class 2 antigens on their surfaces. So that's how the paracortex region is uh, going to have some sort of uh, T cells. So that's why we call this region as thymus dependent area or T dependent area. Whereas the first cortex region is going to be completely independent of uh, T cells. So that's why it is a thymus independent and the paracortex region is a thymus dependent and coming to the internal part 
so here it is in the green color so that is going to be called as medulla so the innermost layer of the lymph node is medulla and this contains so what it contains the cortex region is having b cells and the paracortex is going to have the t cells then what will be there in the inside so obviously both are there that means this contain both b and t cells which are sparsely and some scavengers phagocytic cells that are macrophages are also present in this medullary region so that's how in the histology of uh, that is morphologically the lymph nodes are going to have three concentric regions that is outer cortex and middle paracortex and inner medullary the cortex is the thymus independent possesses only b lymphocytes and the paracortex is the thymus dependent it possesses only t cells that is t lymphocytes and in the middle part that is the in inside you are having the medullary region that medullary region possesses both t cells and b cells and along with some sort of a phagocytic cells like macro phases and then moving to the functions of this uh, lymph node obviously the lymph node is involved in filter and eliminating the foreign antigens that are being carried or circulating in the lymph one of the fluid and then body fluid then it is going to be the site of immune response by both humoral and cell mediated why it is going to have both humoral and cell mediated in the cortex region we are having the b cells so which produce the antibodies and in the paracortex region you are able to find out the t lymphocytes so obviously t cells macrophages all these are involved in the cell mediated immunity so that's how we can find this lymph node as both Uh, humoral as well as the cell mediated immunity response then it is going to be the lymphocytes residence and the source of recirculation cells and these are also as i told you they are rich in phagocytes and functions as important centers of phagocytosis so these are going to be the main major functions of a lymph node okay so uh, that's all about all these Uh, functions of lymph node so as uh, the lymph uh, flows across this nodes from the afferent these are all going to be called as afferent lymphatic ducts and as the uh, lymph is going to be carried and they are going to pass through this cortex region paracortex region and then to this medullary region and here all the antigens are going to be trapped and antibodies are going to coated and then macrophages are going to come into play that is a phagocytosis process and those are being removed and the pure uh, whatever the removed antigen removed free of antigen lymph is going to come out in the with the help of this efferent duct lymphatic duct okay so this is how uh, we are going to have the removal of the antigens that are going to be in the lymphat lymphatic ducts or lymph nodes which are going to be circulated throughout the body in the form of limbs okay then this is all about the first type of uh, uh, lymph node that is a secondary lymphoid organs one type is a lymph node then we are going to have the second organ which is involved in this uh, lymphoid secondary lymphoid organ is a spleen okay so this is all about your spleen so here it is so the lymph is mainly involved in the purification of our lymph lymph nodes and here the spleen is involved in the purification of our blood that is removal of the antigens from the blood is going to be done by this secondary lymphoid organ spleen so let's see the structure of the spleen and functions of the spleen so coming to the spleen the spleen plays a major role in immune responses to antigens in the blood stream that's what i told you the lymph nodes are going to have a major role uh, in immune response to antigens that are present in the lymph whereas the spleen is involved in the blood stream process okay and the spleen is going to be a large ovoid secondary lymphoid organ situated high in the left abdominal cavity i have showed you here is a high at the uh, where we are going to have the spleen okay then coming to the spleen filters blood and trap the blood borne antigen that it can respond to systemic 
infection. So mainly it is going to uh, respond more quickly to the systematic uh, infections. And then the spleen is not supplied by any lymphatic vessel, so it is not going to purify any lymph. So that's all going to be taken up by the lymph node systems only. Then the blood bone antigens or foreign particles and lymphocytes are carried into the spleen through the splenic artery. So the splenic artery is going to uh, carry the uh, unpurified blood that is possessing the antigens and in the circulation we are also having the lymphocytes that is B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes and they will reach this spleen which is a secondary lymphoidal organ through an artery called a splenic artery not this one dark one this one okay so this pink color shared one is the splenic artery now the blood along with the antigens and the lymphocytes are going to reach the spleen now what is happening in the spleen how this uh, antigens are going to be removed how the blood is going to be purified everything we will discuss by studying about the structure of spleen now so let's uh, see the structure of a spleen here okay so as usual the spleen is also an encapsulated structure like our lymph node okay and this extends a number of projections so here you can see the capsule is going to have some sort of a protrusions those we are going to be called as trabeculae so these are going to be called as trabeculae into form a compartmental structure so because of this you are going to see compartments like structures in the spleen and these compartments are of two types one is going to be called as a red pulp which is red in color another one is going to be called as white pulp which is obviously white in color and this red pulp and the white pulp are going to be separated by a diffuse uh, marginal zone which we uh, simply call uh, this okay pulse this marginal zone is going to be called as a pulse what is this pulse everything we will discuss now okay once again the spleen is surrounded by a capsule and this capsule is going to extend into the projections called as a trabeculae into the thing and this is going to have the two compartments uh, the one compartment is red in color and the one is a white so obviously red pulp region and the white pulp region so what are those regions everything we will discuss now so coming to the red pulp region the splenic red pulp consists of a network of sinusoids so here you can see this vascular sinusoid so here okay and these sinusoids are mainly populated by macrophages and uh, numerous erythrocytes and few lymphocytes and these sinusoids or the red pulp is a site where old and defective rbc's are destroyed and removed okay so these are the sinusoid region in the red pulp region where maximum old and defective rbc's are going to be destroyed and what are the cells that are present here macrophages and then numerous rbc cells and few lymphocytes are present in it and many of the macrophages within the red pulp contain angle for rbc i told you old and defective are going to be removed and that the removing is done by macrophages so obviously inside the macrophages we can see this rbc or even the hemoglobin pigment containing the rbc the red blood cell containing this hemoglobin pigment can also be seen in those macrophages in the degraded form okay so this is all about the red pulp region reg red pulp region then coming to the white pulp region so this is our white pulp region the splenic white pulp surrounds the branches of splenic artery so this is our splenic artery so this is pink color and this is going to be surrounded by our white pulp region so this whole thing is going to be of our white pulp and uh, and forming a periarteriolar lymphoidal sheath so if you observe here the small uh, ball like structures around this uh, splenic artery is going to be seen and that is going to be called as pulse that is periarteriolar lymphoidal sheath that means the lymphoidal cells 
are going to form as the sheath surrounding this artery that's how that name was given as periarteriolar lymphoidal sheath simply called as pulse okay pulse and this uh, pulse is mainly populated with t lymphocytes what are there here t lymphocytes and there are primary follicles which are attached to this pulse so here you can see these are going to be called as primary follicles in the lymph nodes i told in the cortex region they are going to be called as primary follicles when an antigen enters these primary follicles are going to be formed into secondary molecules which are going to have the germinal centers synthesizing or producing the antibodies so in the same manner here in the pulse region you are able to find these primary follicles okay and here is the germinal center and this is a secondary follicle containing the germinal centers and the marginal zone located uh, peripheral to the pulse so this is the pulse and the marginal zone of this pulse is populated by the both lymphocytes are there as well as the macrophages are there and this is going to be called as a marginal zone which is separating the red pulp with the white pulp now let's see the physiology of the spleen how it is going to be involved in uh, uh, carrying the antigen and removing the antigen all the things or the process of this uh, uh, removing of the antigen so now for example a uh, blood borne antigens and as well as the lymphocytes enter the spleen through the splenic artery so through this they have entered so into the marginal zone so they have reached here marginal zone in the marginal zone antigen is trapped so obviously at the marginal zone they are going to be trapped once they are going to have the flow so this is the end of our artery so obviously they are going to be at the region in the marginal zone antigen is trapped by what are there here lymphocytes as well as interdigitating dendritic cells and some sort of macrophages are there now these are going to trap that antigen which carry into the pulse so after trapping they are going to be carried towards the pulse that is periarteriolar lymphoidal sheath and now lymphocytes in the marginal zone uh, migrates to the pulse so along with the t lymphocytes whatever the lymphocytes that are present in this pulse uh, sorry marginal zone will also move move towards this pulse like this okay now the initial activation of t and b cells where are the t and b cells t cells are these one and the b cells are going to be in the form of follicles takes place in the t cell rich pulse so we know that the pulse is going to be rich in t lymphocytes isn't it the activated b cells so here along with some t cells that is t helper cells then migrate to the primary follicles now the t cells got uh, whatever the b cells are there they are getting activated with the help of these t cells and they will migrate to the primary follicles so here it is in the marginal zone upon that is after antigenic exposure uh, that is challenge that means after antigenic uh, challenge these primary follicles develop into secondary follicles containing the germinal centers so these are going to be called as secondary follicles which rapidly give b cells and plasma cells that's how they are going to bind to the antigens and removing the process all going to continue okay so this is the overall process what is happening in the spleen in removing of the antigens once again the spleen is surrounded by a capsule okay and this capsule is going to have number of uh, protrusion projections called as a trabeculae and because of these trabeculae the spleen is going to be seen in the form of a compartmentalized structures okay and the compartments are going to be of two types mainly the red pulp and the white pulp the red pulp is going to mainly have the sinusoid that is vascular sinusoid containing macrophages and very few lymphocytes and numerous rbc cells and here in the red pulp region the old and defective rbcs are going to be destroyed then coming to the white pulp region 
the white pulp is going to be surrounded by the branches of splenic artery so here this is a splenic artery and which is going to be surrounded by this is going to be the white pulp region and we are going to have a sheath that is surrounding this artery is going to be called as a pulse the full form of pulse is periarteriolar lymphoidal sheath that is pulse okay now this pulse is uh, mainly going to have a population of T lymphocytes rather than the B they are going to have the more number of T lymphocytes and the primary follicles are attached to the pulse so here you can see like the flowers they are all going to be the primary follicles when they converted in the secondary follicles so these are secondary follicles and they are going to be converted into secondary follicles when they are exposed to the antigens okay now from here the b cells and the plasma cells will be differentiated and that's how you are going to have the antigenic removal from the uh, bloodstream okay coming to the physiology as the uh, splenic artery carrying the antigens as well as the lymphocytes that uh, antigens are going to be trapped by the lymphocytes and the dendritic cells that are present at the marginal zone so this is a marginal zone Okay, which is separating the red pulp and the white pulp region and now once they are going to be uh, entered so those antigens are going to be trapped by these macrophages or dendritic cells and the lymphocytes along with the antigens moves towards this pulse region and the t-cells also get activated now all these together will move towards the primary follicle now once the antigenic stimulation occurs these primary follicles will be modified into the secondary follicles containing the germinal centers which rapidly give the b cells and the plasma cells once the b cells means nothing but our antibodies so obviously they uh, these antibodies combine with the antigen and remove them and the blood is going to be a free of any pathogens or the foreign particles so that's it uh, this is the structure of a spleen and the process how it is going to remove the antigen that are going to be present in the blood okay so this is all about the structure of spleen and then coming to the functions of a uh, spleen the spleen uh, traps the blood bond antigens and initiates of both humoral and cell mediated immunity that occurs uh, in the spleen uh, what we call it as that occurs in the spleen in response to these antigens okay so it's a site of immunocytes residence so majority of our t-cells b-cells everything are present so obviously it's a site of uh, immunocytes region and at the same time it traps the blood-borne path antigens or pathogens and initiate both humoral as well as the cell mediated immune in the lymphoidal also we are going to have both humoral and cell mediated okay and in response to the antigens and this spleen also serves as a graveyard for blood cells that's how the old rbc and the defective rbcs are going to be destroyed so we can also consider this spleen as graveyard for blood cells and then it's a reserve tank in the formation of uh, rbc obviously for the formation of the rbc it is going to be considered as a reserve tank and even the spleen acts as a filter for trapping the foreign particles that passes through the circulatory blood so while the blood circulation is occurring if anything is going to be so it's like a check post okay so that's how the spleen is very important in the formation of rbc as well as in the uh, removal of the antigens or the pathogens from the blood circulation so this is all about the uh, secondary lymphoid organ spleen. So we had gone through the two types of the things. One is lymph node and second one is the spleen. And we are going to discuss one more uh, secondary lymphoid organ that is malt, galt, salt, etc. So here we'll go and overall of all these things. So coming to the malt, the mucous uh, membranes lining the elementary canal, uh, like respiratory and genital urinary tract systems have a very large combined surface which is constantly exposed to numerous antigens and is the major site of uh, entry for most pathogens isn't it your mouth your genital urinary tract all these things so these vulnerable membrane surfaces 
possess a group of organized lympho lymphoidal tissue that we are going to call uh, them as mucosal associated tissue. The group of organized lymphoidal tissue is going to be collectively called as mucosal associated lymphoidal tissues. There are several types of uh, mucosal associated lymphoidal tissues that we are going to read are as I told you GALT that is gut associated lymphoidal tissue uh, which includes our tonsils, payers, patches, then appendix and loosely organized clusters of uh, lymphoidal cells in the lamina propria of uh, intestine villi. Okay, so all these things. And mucosal associated tissue is mainly uh, functional, very significant in uh, what we call immune system of the body. Why it is so significant means because of the presence of large number of antibody producing plasma cells so that is the asset of it so it is going to have the more number of uh, uh, producing antibody producing plasma cell in it and the number of plasma cells in malt far exceeds that means their number is more than the plasma cells present in the spleen lymph nodes and the bone marrow so this malt is going to have the more number of uh, b cells when compared to the other organs and tissues the predominant immunoglobulin produced in mucosa is uh, mainly secretory immunoglobulin A and other immunoglobulins may be G, M and E. The lymphoidal tissue in the gut is going to be tonsils called gut associated lymphoidal tissue and even in the bronchus you are going to have which is called as a simply bulge. Okay, let's uh, and those in the skin obviously I told skin associated lymphoidal tissue and this GALT contains a full range of uh, lymphoreticular cells that is T and B cells and some macrophages also. And this MALT provides a defense against mainly foodborne pathogens. That means uh, your mouth contains this kind of a, a system which is going to protect you from foodborne pathogens like Staph aureus, Bacillus cereus, E. coli, etc. And the functions coming to the malt is going to be the first line of defense so it is the first check post that it is going to remove the antigens from the uh, entry and this is going to be the site of immune response participates the delayed hypersensitivity so this is another uh, important topic in the immunology subject which we'll discuss in another part and see here is a mucosal associated lymphoidal tissue where an antigen transported across the epithelial layer by some M cells, okay, here are the M cells, and at an inactive site active, activates the primary follicle of B cells, okay, underlying this lymphoidal tissue. Now the activated, so it is going to produce the, this primary follicle is going to be converted into secondary follicle, contains germinal centers and produce more number of B cells and the plasma cells. And now these plasma cells differentiates into the concerned antibodies called as IgA producing the plasma cells which migrate along the mucosa membrane that is a submucosa. The outer mucosal epithelia contains these all which are going to be the T cells. So here are the T cells, these antibodies all together will attack it and it will remove. So this is all about the mucosal associated tissue. Okay. Then we will move to the gut, a quick of this one. So the most uh, studied one is the gut, which uh, associated with uh, tonsils, uh, paste patches, appendix, and loosely organized clusters of uh, lymphoidal cells in the lamina propria of intestinal villi. So first of all, let's see the tonsils. So you know, there are three groups of tonsils present at the three different locations. Those are uh, palatine, lingual and pharyngeal so here you can see the pharyngeal or adenoids and this is the palatine okay and this is going to be the lingual the palatine group of tonsils occurs obviously at the so here you can see these are going to be uh, at the sides of the back of the mouth so here and here and coming to the lingual is going to be at the base of the tongue so you can see here and the pharyngeal that is adenoids is uh, in the roof of the nasopharynx region so here this is the nasopharynx region you are going to see at the roof okay 
and all the uh, aforesaid tonsils that is the three groups are going to be of nodule like and consists of a mesh of reticular cells and fibers interpreted with uh, what we call lymphocytes, macrophages, granulocytes and mast cells. Okay, so those are all going to be uh, interpressed in these organs that is tissues and the B lymphocytes are organized into follicles and germinal centers. Now what happens? The germinal centers surrounded by these regions showing the T lymphocytes activity. However, the tonsils protect against antigens that enter through the nasal and oral epithelial growth. So that's the reason why if any uh, dust or particles if you are inhaling obviously you will have some sort of a pain or inconvenience at your throat and the nasopharynx region. That's all because of the effect that these adenoids, palatine tonsils and the lingual tonsils containing these uh, different system that is T cells and B cells are going to fight with uh, these antigens okay and then coming to the pace patches is another important one which is present or occur in the submucosal layer so here you can see this is the pale patches region which is present beneath the lamina properia okay so here is the lamina properia it is present here this is the pace patches lying under the epithelial layer of your intestinal villi and each pair's patches, so here each pair's patches is a nodule of about 30 to 40 lymphoidal follicles. So there are going to be of 30 to 40 lymphoidal follicles. And these lymphoidal follicles in other sites uh, compose of pair's patches can develop into secondary follicles and that's how releasing the antibodies, okay, that is B cells. And here you can look at the cross-section view of uh, mucosal membrane lining the intestine showing the pace patches and uh, lymph nodule in the submucosal region. This is the lymph nodules and in the lamina properia contains a cluster of lymphoidal cells and diffuse follicles. Okay, And coming to the lamina properia, lamina properia occurs under the epithelial layer of intestinal villi and it is mainly populated with large number of plasma cells, macrophages, activated T helper cells in loose clusters and nearly more than uh, 15,000 lymphoidal follicles have been reported with the lamina properia of a healthy chain. So where is the lamina properia? Here it is in the malt you can see this is a region. Okay, in a uh, Chail, we can observe about more than 15,000 lymphoidal follicles were reported of a healthy shed. So this is all about the secondary lymphoidal organs. Okay, so we have seen the lymph nodes, then spleen and the mucosal associated lymphoidal tissues. Thank you.